number one, you've made, you're making calls like in Wolf on Wall Street and you finally get the right person on the line. This is where most people panic. So let me give you a little roadmap what to expect. Number one, you don't make that call unless you've role played it 10 times. The number's 10 and you've recorded yourself. So you hear exactly how you sound. If you've never done that, do it once or twice. You'll probably laugh like I laugh at myself every time I see myself on screen, right? So role play 10 times. So here are the rules of the road of when you actually get the decision maker on the call. I'm gonna slow down. Number one, we have a saying down in South Florida where I live, he or she remains flexible, will never get bent out of shape. Stay flexible. If you've never heard the terminology GIGO, get in, get out, write it down. Your style, your personality, the way you talk. Don't, listen, don't talk like Peter or Gerald or Steve or Julia. Talk like yourself naturally. You've got to be memorable. And again, they say what something Steve said. If nothing else, ask them for a referral or who else in the organization you should be talking to. You see, anybody else in the organization is the right person to talk to. Get another meeting, part of the roadmap. My friend uh, earlier said today, two ears and one mouth, listen twice as much as you talk. And very important point, this is the start of the relationship. Let me tell all, even the best reps I work with in the world, you are not that good that you can close on the first call. If you did, you are lucky, and they probably won't run more than one week. Gerald's laughing at me. You are not that good. This is about the start of the relationship. So let me give you the actual verbiage I coach. Good morning, Steve. Pref my preference always is, uh, this is the US. People use first names. My preference is I use last names. Good morning, Ms. Campbell. Why? You want to be memorable. My name is Jody. I'm with the Fort, the Fort Worth Report. And, and you go, do you know what that is? And they go, no. And you explain what the Fort, Fort Worth Report is. I am conducting a survey on behalf of the Fort Worth Report to see how COVID has affected your business and what you see in 2022. Something like that. Survey is the keyword. That's all they hear. Remember, you have 30 seconds to make an impact. 30 seconds to go, I should listen to this guy or click next. I'm conducting a survey. See how COVID's affected your business and how we might be able to help you in 2022. Okay? Same Something along those ways. Number one, somebody said the advice you gave last week. Great. Then what you do is, very importantly, go into the questioning technique. So they heard survey, all the questions we ask. So I'm setting up right here how we get to the presentation later today. Then you say, so Ms. Newton, what I heard you say was blah, 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 blah. Yes, I said that. What I'm going to do is go back, talk to my team of experts. I have a social expert. I have a branding expert, I have a print expert, and give you some great options. So you've understood what the need is, you've understood the pain, you've done your survey. It's the same thing as asking needs analysis, and you have right there. That is the easiest way on a cold call to get them to talk. And you say up front, which I didn't say, I promise it won't take more than three to four minutes of your time. Now remember, if they want to talk, like my friend from McClatchy, for 30 minutes, let them talk. But the rule of thumb is when you get to four minutes, you goes, Mr. Steven, I said four minutes. Should I continue or should I reschedule? If the conversation, they like it, they'll always say, keep talking. Once they keep talking, you have them, right? You're going to come back with a team of experts and explain what the best option is. That's the cold call. Again, practice, practice, practice.